Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you the basics and a little introduction to Adobe Premiere CS6. So if you've used a video editing suite before, you're in luck because this is going to be the video for you. So once you install um, and load up uh, Premiere CS6, you're going to go ahead and click New Project. This here is where you just, you don't really have to worry about that. This is more for if you were somewhere in the media. And we're just going to go ahead and over here like in location, we're going to click and change it to somewhere else. So I'm going to say have it there. And we're going to name it Untitled, name it Untitled 3, you can name whatever you want. This is the project that you're going to be referring to. Hit OK. Now this is where your presets are, so that's how wide the screen is, so if you're going to be the footage is going to be in 1080p or 720p, whatever. I'm in Australia, so I'm going to use DV for slash PAL. PAL is our regional uh, format. And widescreen 48 kilohertz. Next up, this is where you're going to be doing all your editing and rearranging and effects and everything. So you've got four little windows here. This one here is obviously where you're going to be previewing your videos. Down here we've got a few controls to add a marker, marking in, run out if you want to um, select a place inside a clip, go to in, step backwards, play, pause, step forward, and here's lift clips, extract a clip, and export the frame. Down here is our timeline, we have layers down here, so there's video 3, video 2, video 1, and same with audio, we can go here and add a track, we can go here and add another track, and there I've got four video and one, four audio tracks. We can toggle the track, we can toggle the tracks, we can turn videos off once we're editing. And over here, next, is a little uh, control panel. So we've got our media browser, our effects panel, our markers, our history and our everything that's in the project. To add something to the project, there's a few ways. First one will probably be this here. All your disks, you can go here and navigate through and find media. Or we can go to project, or we can go up here to um, file and then import. But the easiest way is to right click and say import. Next, we're going to find a video. So I'll go out to my introduction introduction here. So this is one um, video that's been imported. So as you can see here, I'm moving my mouse and it's playing through the video. And again, of course, we can add another photo. I'll add another something else. Something else going to add. Uh, let's go into here. Let's get a photo of a cake. Well, of cake. So again, we've got our first sequence. Don't really have to worry about that so far. You can just have multiple sequences, so multiple videos in the one file. But we're going to go over here and add the photo of the cake first. So to do that, we can just click and drag it into... I recommend having one layer for all your photos, one layer all for, vi all your, for, all for your videos, and vice versa. So we'll add, add the photo of a cake. And we'll add the introduction. So we can place, um, notice we can place stuff on top of each other. So of course it goes from top to bottom, so whatever, whatever's on the top is going to be shown first, like over the video. But we want to make it so it comes in after. To notice that, see the black line? Click there. Now it's in line. It'll play after the um, chocolate cake has been completed. The chocolate cake runs for only a few seconds to really get into the detail. Hold Alt and then scroll in on the timeline and you'll be able to see how long it goes for. So it goes for around five seconds or so. Yeah, five seconds. And again, then where we can make a little bit more changes there. Next, we want to apply a little effect. So we're going to go over here to effects and then we're going to say video transitions. We're going to go add addictive dissolve, that's pretty good, and we're going to apply it to the 
to the um, to our chocolate cake, and we're going to do it at the front. So now when we go back, scrub back, and click play, it'll have a nice fade in. Now again we can do the same, we can do a, uh, a dip to, I'll do a dip to white, dip to white on our video file. So now when we scroll, scrub over, and then it, when it changes, we'll have that there. So that's effects in Final, I mean, um, <laughs> about to say Final Cut in Premiere Pro. Now again, a PR I haven't really talked about yet is the audio controls. So for when we when we go to, over to an audio file, we can play a frame. You can see it down here as well, or up here. But if we play it, which at the moment it's pretty loud. But that's mainly because I've got my headset turned up. And then we can turn down the volume. So yeah, it's gone down. Turn it down a bit more. Makes it a bit quieter. Mainly, either I would just leave it up for everything that I and for everything that I'd be doing anyway. And one thing to note up here where it says effect control, if we click on an effect, this is where we can edit the the time it takes. So I can make it go a bit longer and that'll show us that. And it'll also tell us what it's affecting and the duration and this is just the start and the end and one A and B. This is how it works, but that dissolve will last a bit longer. And again, I can do the same for the this one. So I'll make that a bit longer. Well, I'll actually make it a bit longer to make it more noticeable. So now it'll take longer. F it'll go more into the clip. It starts like that. So it's really quite cool to play around with this and just get familiar with it. So that's what I recommend doing, so playing around with it and just making sure you know what you're doing. Now of course we can mute the clip here, so we won't know, we won't hear any sound. So obviously there's no sound. That's mainly if you're working with more multiple clips. And in terms of rendering, we can go up in here to render effects in work area, render entire and render the audio. The only reason why you're willing to do that if you're dropping frames during playback. So that's dropping frames once when you're playing it through here. To know if you're doing that, um, we can go actually don't think I can show you actually. I'll get that to you though. I'll show that in another video. But for now, we'll just go ahead and render that clip. So we're going to go up to File, Export, Media. Now this is where you choose the format, and I'm going to go ahead and choose H.264 because that's the best for what I do. Doesn't change or distort any blackness, doesn't do anything like that. And we're going to go ahead and do it into here. We can just title the sequence one. Use maximum render quality if you have a decent computer. Use previews, you don't have to do that frame rendering frame blending doesn't really have to be applied either. And we hit export and it'll go ahead and export and render it. Now it isn't really the same as rendering it, but it kind of is really. It sucks them all together and applies them. So sequence four shows the cake and then it'll show my intro. My old intro I should say. Which isn't a really good example. And that's a pretty much basic overhaul of the interface and how to apply an effect to a clip and then export it as a MPEG4, MPEG4 video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it and subscribe for more computer and tech videos. Thank you.